All right. So, hi everyone. Welcome to Wink's first live professional development workshop. Today we're going to be going over how I got my internships. So, uh, what we'll be going over is applying to internships, interviewing for internships, getting an offer, as well as my experiences in my internships. So, first off, applying. So be sure to update your resume so your most recent experiences are listed. Also update your LinkedIn so when recruiters look you up, you have good on, a good online presence. Also have a list of places where you want to apply to before you start applying so that you don't just start applying to like all these places and that so you can keep track of where you're applying to. Also be sure to set up a tracking system to track your applications. I highly recommend Notion. I know a lot of other people would also highly recommend it. It's really good for organizing where you're applying and all every, and also for organizing your coding reports, interviews and offers so that you can keep track of deadlines and everything. And that, so that you don't have to like mentally keep track of things, which gets pretty confusing after a while. So uh, yeah, use Notion to keep track of your applications. This is an example of Notion. Uh, so you can put down things like company, position, your status, as well as the deadlines within that application, as well as, as well as job descriptions and everything. And you can also put your resume on here so that when you're applying, you have your resume on you. And so it's easy to apply to places. So be sure to apply as soon as the applications come out so that you can be as early on within the process as you can, because the later you apply, the less likely you are to get the position or even get contacted back by a recruiter. So it's better to apply as soon as they come out or as early as possible. Also, try to get a referral if you know anyone working at a company you're applying to, because this will allow your application to pass through the vetting stage and go straight to a recruiter. So usually when your application is submitted, it goes through some sort of um, check that like, checks for keywords and things like that. And then if it has certain keywords that align with what they want, then it gets passed on to a recruiter. But if you get a referral, then it goes straight to the recruiter and you don't have to go through that vetting process, which uh, gives you more, which is more likely to uh, get passed on to a recruiter. So also start using the tracking system you set up to keep track of your applications, such as Notion, because mentally tracking applications isn't very effective. So this is an example of my notion. So I have these uh, columns which have need to apply, applied, you know, status, information retrieval, initial call, coding report, uh, coding report done and technical interview. So this allows me to um, be able to visually look at like the places that I've applied to. And then I also move them along within the process so that I don't have to look at my emails to say like, oh, okay, this is when this is due and then uh, having to like keep on searching for information within my emails. It allows me to have everything within one place so that um, I don't forget any deadlines and so that I know that like what deadlines are coming up and everything. Also, be sure to apply to many places and not just dream internships. If it's your dream inter internship, it's likely thousands of others dream internship. Uh, more applicants means more. it's more competitive to get into also, experience is experience. Getting an internship that isn't your first choice is better than not getting an internship at all. So it's better to get an internship that you might not think as like very prestigious, but you still get that same experience, even though it's not as prestigious as a name, you still get that on the job experience, which is better than nothing. Interviewing. So. My personal interviewing strategies are making a study guide with big O runtimes, some basic data structures and algorithms knowledge, and other necessary information that you believe is necessary. So study this cheat sheet as the interview as the interview approaches, as well as right before the interview to prepare yourself. Also, during the interview, be sure to communicate well. Uh, so before you implement, state your implementation idea so that the interviewer can give you any tips as to if that implementation idea might need some improvements or if that's a good way to approach it. Also, while you're implementing, state what you're doing so that the interviewing so that the interviewer knows your train of thought. 
Also, after you implement, explain your final algorithm so that they know how you approached it and they know your train of thought. Also, be sure to watch my previous professional development videos to get some more interviewing strategies. I didn't really lay out a lot of specifics within these slides because I know that I already stated um, a lot of important details within my previous professional development, work professional development workshops. So be sure to watch those to get some more information on how to interview. So getting an offer. If you pass all the interviews and you fit the company culture, then you will get an offer. After getting an offer, you usually have the opportunity to, to interview with teams at that company to see where you fit in the best. So an example is that when I was uh, interviewing at Google after I got the offer, I interviewed with four different teams and uh, they asked about what skills I had to see if they aligned with what skills they wanted as an intern. And then I got to choose from four different teams also based on location. One of them was in New York and three of them were in the Bay Area. So I got to choose where I wanted to be as well as uh, what type of things I wanted to do, to do during the internship. So um, after you get the offer, usually there's a team matching stage. So also be ready for that. So my personal experiences. So for uh, Google, my engineering practicum internship, the timeline was that I applied, I believe I applied in November and then one month later in December, I was contacted back for a coding interview. And then after that coding interview, uh, after one week after giving my times for that coding interview, I did two back-to-back -back one hour coding interviews. And then one month later, I received a call from my recruiter saying I received an offer. And then for NASA JPL for my software engineering internship, I applied, I believe in October, and then one month later, I was informed that I had moved forward in the process. And then two months later, I interviewed with a team that was interested in bringing me on. And then two days later, I received an email from that team saying I received an offer. And then for Zybooks, for the content developer position, I applied. And then one month later, I was contacted back for an interview. And then one month later, I received a call from my recruiter saying I received an offer. So I really just showed these personal timelines so that you can gauge kind of the timelines for uh, recruiting. So even if you're not contacted back within like a week, don't be worried. It took me, as you can see, like with most of my internships, it took them about a month to contact me back. So uh, even if it takes them a while to contact you back, you can still expect good news. So thank you for watching. Uh, any questions? Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to either put them in the chat or uh, you can also speak them out loud. You can turn on your mic. So I'd have to say that my favorite internship definitely was at Google. Um, they have a lot of good perks there. Um, I would say perks wise, uh, Google was probably my favorite internship, but I'd say that in the beginning, I was still like, that was my freshman internship. So I didn't really have like a lot of skills in terms of CS. So I feel like I wasn't able to contribute as much as I wanted to. Whereas for NASA JPL, I'd say project wise, that was definitely my favorite internship because I was able to use C++, which is like the language that we learn in our classes. So I was a little bit um, more confident in implementing things within their uh, code base. So I would say they're probably about equal, NASA, JPL, and Google. Also, like I've always wanted to work at NASA like since I was really young. So that was just like a dream internship at my, dream internship of mine. So like being able to actually work there and like saying I get to work at NASA was like really cool. Also, uh, what was my hardest tech interview? Uh, hardest tech interview, I would have to say was, I would have to say it was at Google um, for the software engineering internship last year. I think they asked me a question about um, dynamic programming and we didn't even learn dynamic programming until CS 141. So I didn't really know like how to approach it. So that was definitely really hard because I hadn't studied any questions on dynamic programming. And I looked at like 
different experiences for the software engineering internship. And a lot of people were like, yeah, they're not going to ask you dynamic programming because like, that's really hard to implement. And then I went to my, into my internship and then they asked me a dynamic programming, programming question. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting this and it was really hard. So um, how do I uh, handle tough questions? I usually try to read it over and over again and think about how I'm going to approach it rather than going straight into it. And then I also like to discuss it with my uh, interviewer so that they can see my train of thought and then they could either like tell me if I'm going in the wrong direction or the right direction, or they can give you some, give me some hints on like how to implement it. So where can we find your other videos? So if you look up Woman in Computing UCR on YouTube, our YouTube channel should be should be the first like uh, choice within your search. Um, I believe it's also on our Instagram on our link tree, there should be a link to the various professional development videos. Uh, so where, what year did you start applying for internships? So I started applying to internships like right when I was 16. I didn't include my internships from high school since those weren't really relevant to computer science. They were more like starting to get into the field and doing like some sort of like data analysis and things like that instead of like actual like computer science like software engineering things so um I don't know if like that's your question like when did I start applying to internships like in terms of like years but like if you're asking about like when I started applying to internships in terms of like this year I started applying in August so be sure to start applying to internships as early as possible like when they start coming out I know there's a couple of internships that um that close their applications like mid-September, like even like early August. So be sure to like start applying really early in the year. Like as soon as you start seeing like internships coming up for the following year, start applying. Do I recommend any resources for interview practice? I would say HackerRank is a really good uh, way to learn about different concepts if you're not too familiar with concepts within interview questions. And then lead code is where you go when you want to practice a lot of like questions because HackerRank uh, teaches you more about the concepts and like how to fully approach them. Whereas lead code is the types of questions that um, companies usually actually ask. So I would say for like um, right before the interview, I would go on to lead code and practice their questions. But then if you really want to like learn about the concepts that would go on HackerRank. Also, there's a book called something, how to approach the coding interview. I forgot specifically what it's called, but that's also a really good resource. Um, they also teach about like different concepts and like how to approach different interview questions. It's more so like about the concepts rather than the actual questions that are gonna be on the interview. So that's also a really good resource. Um, yeah, cracking the coding interview. That's why, yeah, that's a really good resource. Uh, any other questions or any questions that I missed? What type of software dev did you do? Um, I did, so for Google, I did mostly front end. And then for NASA JPL, I did full stack. So at Google, I, uh, I used TypeScript, CSS, and HTML to work on their, the front end of their software. And then at Google, I also did mostly the front end with C++. It was a GUI, but I interacted a lot with the back end with their networking of the images and stuff. Does anyone else have any other questions? Okay, so it looks like no one else has any other questions. Uh, I'll wait a minute to make sure like nobody's typing in a question at the moment.
what kinds of projects did you do? So in terms of projects, do you mean like at my internships or projects like in school or like outside of my internships? Outside of internships. So outside of internships, I did projects at um, hackathons. So some projects that I've done, let me see if I can like, I don't remember the specifics of my projects, but I'll go ahead and pull in my resume. So some projects that I've done at hackathons were things such as a project that I did in my freshman year was a uh, reputation. And what this did was it accessed social media followers from platforms and then um, assigned a raw score to how like popular your social media was. And then also in my first year, um, I created an application called Tindimals. So it's pretty much like Tinder for animals. So it matched people with pets that want someone to play with them. And that was especially useful for like shelter animals. And then like you could chat with like the pets to like see if you want to like interact with them. And then make sure that like shelter animals are like less lonely. And then also I made an other application. This was an iOS application. It was called Pantry and it tracks groceries that people have so that they know what food they have in their pantry to like hinder food waste. And then I was also involved in MicroMouse in IEEE. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the projects I did. I did most of them my first year because like I got a lot busier my second year. So I wasn't able to like build like full projects at hackathons. Does that answer your question? Does anyone else have any other questions? I'm going to wait one more minute. Did you have CS experience prior to hackathons? Um, I had a little bit of CS experience. Um, I would say like in high school, I took AP computer science. So that was a little bit of computer science experience. But then um, in terms of like the things that I implemented within the hackathons, I didn't have a lot of experience with those since I felt like hackathons were really an experience to try out new things. Cause like within hackathons, a lot of companies come in, they say they have like certain awards, like if you use their software to implement something within your project. So I really tried to like use their platforms and like tried to, tried to learn new things that like I didn't know before. So like for one hackathon, I implemented an iOS application. I didn't know a lot about iOS, but I found someone who knew a lot about iOS and then we worked on a project together. And then for um, another one of my projects, I worked with JavaScript. I had a little bit experience of experience with JavaScript, but I didn't have full experience with like implementing an application. So that was really fun, like learning about how to implement that. And then um, also for another one, I tried to implement a web application. And I also didn't have a lot of experience with implementing that so that was really fun being able to create a website and try to implement that. And yeah, I didn't really have a lot of CS experience before those. It was really like an intro to a lot of softwares when I, when I went into the hackathon. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, if nobody else has any questions, then 
uh, we're going to go ahead and end this workshop. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Also, be sure to check out my previous professional development workshops on our YouTube channel. Uh, those are really informative on like the different aspects of interviewing, and they really go into the specifics of like the coding interview and how I approach it on a more specific level. Also, this professional development workshop, it was recorded. So it will also be available on the YouTube channel probably later today or by tomorrow. So you'll be able to rewatch it in case you missed anything. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, and yeah, have a great day.